Hi everyone, my name's Greg. I'm the founder and lead of the Singularity Container Project, which started about five years ago. I'm also known, and sometimes blamed, for starting a little Linux distribution called CentOS, as well as the HPC cluster management system, Werewolf. This talk is about building containers with Singularity. As you may know, a common requirement among HPC systems is a performance-focused shared file system. This shared file system must be able to provide data in parallel to massive numbers of compute resources. Given that this is a universal requirement of HPC clusters, we chose to leverage this to store and execute containers in parallel on these systems. To do this, we created the Singularity Image Format, or SIF for short. SIF is a single file binary container image format. It doesn't use tarballs or archives, and it doesn't require any assembly on the compute nodes to use it. This means that the container can be executed directly from the shared storage in a highly optimized and performant manner. This slide demonstrates the performance effect when scaling a containerized singularity workload and comparing that to the running the same application directly on the shared storage. You can see how much better the performance is when using a single file singularity container. This is due to how Singularity coalesces all of the contained content into a single file. Something important to note here is that this example is running on NFS. Many HPC systems use Lustre, and if you're using Lustre, the benefit is going to be even greater. Also, this graph is logarithmic if you haven't noticed, so that delta is even bigger than it may seem. So being a single file, SIFs can be managed like any other user-owned data. This means that sharing a container, it's as easy as changing the POSIX permissions. It also means that you can easily move or share the container using the exact same methods as you already use to manage your existing data. Access controls and controls compliance apply to your containers as it would to any of your other data. Like all container systems, Containers built with Singularity are tagged with a UUID as well as a SHA sum. But even with both of these together, that doesn't provide 100% trust or accountability. For that, you need cryptographic signatures, which Singularity supports in an innovative way, and I will describe shortly. We started off by modeling SIF after ELF, the binary executable format on Linux, and then we built upon it further to account for container-specific needs. The format starts with a global header, where things like the UUID are stored, container name, and the global metadata. And then there's a linked list of descriptors, which have pointers to the underlying object and data blobs within the file. Also, this file is executable, so you can put this entire container into the user's path and run it like any other program. You can control what happens when this file is run using the run script scriptlet, which I will show you shortly. So how do you build a SIF container image? There are two methods. Both work equally well depending on your needs. The first is that you can use the Singularity build process to build a container from scratch or prescriptively modify an existing container. The second, you can simply convert any other standard container format to SIF, and then use the resulting SIF directly. Here you can see a Singularity build recipe that bootstraps a container from scratch. The build recipe is broken into several sections. The first is the bootstrap stanza. This describes the base of your container. In this case, we're using yum to, to create the container base from scratch. Once the base container image has been bootstrapped, the Singularity build process will run the post scriptlet, which could be used to build up and install anything else that you need inside this container. The following run script defines what will happen when this container is run or executed directly. Here's another example that demonstrates both a Docker integration as well as a multi-stage build. As you can see, we start off by pulling a Golang container from Docker Hub. Once that is pulled, we compile a simple program. Now, this entire Golang container is large, and most of it is completely unnecessary once my application is compiled. So I'm going to create a second container, 
and I'm going to cherry pick files from the development stage and put them into the final container. The difference in resulting size of this example is 3.7 megabytes versus 281 megabytes. So now that we have a recipe, we can, we can build a container with a single command. Now, building containers requires some amount of enhanced privilege capability. You can either use sudo or Singularity can emulate that by using the kernel user namespace. If you're using sudo, you probably are not running this on an HPC system. Perhaps instead you're building this container on a laptop or a workstation or a shared development resource or a cloud instance. And then you're transferring that resulting container to your HPC system. On the other hand, if your HPC resource has chosen to enable the user namespace, you can build containers with singularity as a non-privileged user. Additionally, you can build containers remotely using the remote build service offered by Scilabs, where something else that we're seeing a lot of interest in is automated builds via CICD pipelines. This would enable you to build your containers directly from git commit triggers and store these containers in an accessible location to your HPC resource. On the other hand, let's say your container's already been built. Uh, and it's in an OCI or a Docker format. Singularity can build, or rather convert, these containers to SIF. And you can do that using a single non-privileged command, as you can see here. Singularity can also run and convert images on the fly by building a SIF on the back end and then caching that in your home directory for subsequent uses. So let's build a base container and take a look at the contents of what's inside the file. So here you can see that there are three object blobs or partitions in this file. The first is the recipe definition. The next is some metadata about the container, which is analogous in this example to like the config.json in an OCI context. And lastly is the FS partition, which indicates that this is an AMD64 system partition. This is our SquashFS file system, which will be directly mounted by the kernel at runtime. So there's a lot of features that Singularity supports as part of the build process. And one such feature that I'll dive into real quick is encryption. Building an encrypted container is super easy. You simply add the option passphrase to your build command and Singularity is going to prompt you for an encryption uh, secret. To run that container, again, you pass the passphrase to your, to your run uh, command, and Singularity will prompt you for that secret. Singularity also works with public and private keys, as well as integration with HashiCorp Vault to manage these encryption secrets. Some of our current customers, partners, and collaborators heavily rely on this feature when running and storing containers in untrusted environments, such as Edge and Cloud because Singularity doesn't ever have to decrypt the encrypted data and persist that to storage in order to use the container. This is a really big deal because unlike other systems, the encrypted data is never leaked out to the file system. So encryption is how we secure data within the container, but how do you trust the container? How do you guarantee that a particular container comes from the desired source? and that it hasn't been tampered with. One example, Docker Hub was hacked and it exposed nearly 200,000 user accounts in April of 2019. How do we know that the containers were not also tampered with? The answer would be cryptographic signatures and validation applied directly within that container would give us that insight. Unfortunately, trust of containers was an afterthought within the container ecosystem. And thus, it's only supported using a complicated external validation service. To further articulate this need, without cryptographic trust and direct accountability, we may as well be running random programs downloaded off the internet as root on our production systems. And to drive the, the point home even more, no good system administrator would ever install any RPMs or deb files on a production system that has not been signed by a trusted source. Why should containers be any different? One of the things that we've spent a lot of time on with Singularity is to make it an easy and intuitive to use, but also very powerful. 
While cryptography is usually a cringe topic for most normal, sane people, we've made it as simple as possible, so you can do this with only two commands. The first, you just need to create your digital signature using the command singularity key new pair, as you can see here. Then once you've done that, you simply sign your container with this command. Again, this is just a single command and you're done. If you wish to verify that the signature was applied to the container, you can do that by looking at the SIF directly using the SIF list command. If you want to use this now, use this cryptographic signature to verify the contents of your container and the accountability, again, just one command, singularity, verify, and then container name. You can see that this container was verified to come from me and that it has not been modified. When this method is used with a trusted public key exchange, this guarantees 100% trust and reproducibility with no external services which could be spoofed or hacked. Lastly, and I know this strays a little bit from the idea of build, uh, which is what we're, we're talking about here, but you can leverage this cryptographic signature model in Singularity to control what containers can be used via an execution control list. Here you can require that certain key fingerprints are necessary for any container to be used. In the end, there's a lot of ways to build containers. However you choose, we strive to work with them all. Our goal is to help to support your scientific needs. Singularity and SIF are released under an open source three clause BSD license. Recently, Singularity has been moved into a bigger community project called HPCNG. HPCNG stands for the next generation of high performance computing, and this community is focused on collaboration, developing projects, and modernization of both traditional HPC, but also bringing these capabilities to enterprise computing requirements. This is something that I'm very passionate about, and we've been funded by both commercial and federal organizations to build out this vision. If you're interested and you want to follow us, please check out the GitHub as this is developing and moving fast. Thank you.